Hello and welcome. You're listening to Village Mama, a podcast that inspires us moms to pause in the midst of our busyness, to connect with each other, and to know that we are not alone on this parenting journey. My name is Char Lex, and I'm a transformation coach and mom of two, and I create e-courses for busy moms to help guide them on their journey of self-discovery. Each week, I'm sitting down with moms to talk about their journey of parenting and the lessons that they have learned. I want you to consider this your community. I want you to consider us your tribe. Come on in and relax a bit because you are always welcomed in the village, Mama. Hello and welcome to The Village. Today our guest is Jen. Jen, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about you? Thanks so much, Char, for having me. So as Char mentioned, my name is Jen and I have three girls at home, ages almost three, five and nine. And I have been a stay-at-home mom for almost three years now and decided that, you know, because being a mom to three girls wasn't enough. I needed to go ahead and also start my own business. So I've been working in the online space for about two, two and a half years and, um, you know, really found my passion in helping other female entrepreneurs to really let go of this idea that we need to do it all, to embrace delegating and do it with confidence. And to really build a successful business without sacrificing their time. And so this really started out as a personal journey for myself. And, you know, along the way, I realized that I was not the only one dealing with some of these ideas of being a super mom. Hmm. And I wanted to be able to just help others get past that idea as well. Totally. And, you know, I think this is something that it's so important that we actually discuss and unpack, right? So we have moms who are listening in, who are working inside of the home, working outside of the home, or doing both. And the struggle really is real for all of us who are in this space, who are trying to do it all and be it all. So the idea of delegating, you know, it sounds amazing, but how do they even start that? So, I mean, you really hit it on the head because it sounds like the perfect solution, but when it comes time to actually do it, it is so much harder. And I find, especially with, you know, women who are type A people, perfectionists, it's very hard to delegate. And that's even delegate things in the home right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just about delegating in your business or delegating when you're at work, but it's important to also delegate at home. And so really it starts with this idea that you have to let go of the notion that it has to be you and Mm. to take it a step further that it has to be done your way. And that's the hardest one for most of us to get past, right? Because we want the help but we want it our way. We want to micromanage. We want all the steps. We want to tick off all the boxes. And it's funny because, you know, I remember I was reflecting on it yesterday and I just remember, you know, my first daughter, I had no idea what I was doing as a mom, but I was very much into this notion of everything has to be scheduled. Our entire day was scheduled. Um, So I was burnt and my husband was like, Jen, you need to go get away, leave our daughter with me. And so I was like, okay. And so I wrote out a list of her entire schedule for the time I was going to be gone. And he took it. (laughs) <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know, in my heart, I was like, oh, he's going to follow it to the T because he needs to be told how to care for her, right? He needs to know exactly what to do. And so I went out, I did my thing. I had my massage. I came back. I felt great. I felt recharged. And I walked in. He was laying on the couch watching TV. Daughter was in having a nap. And I looked down and to my horror, I saw a pile of shredded newspapers. And I lost it. Like, what? 
Like <laughs> what went on here? And uh, like this moment of panic set in and he just nonchalantly replied, well, she wanted to play and it kept her busy the whole time you were gone. At the time I was like, oh my gosh, like what the heck just happened here? But then, you know, I realized I don't have to control every single detail as long as the main points are hit. Was she fed? Yes. Was her diaper changed? Yes. Did she have a nap? Yes. How that all happened really didn't matter because at the end of the day, I was able to leave the house. I was able to pour into myself and recharge and he took care of it. And so it really was a really good lesson in learning to just kind of let go of that control. And, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen, you know, with one time of actually letting go. It is a process. And, you know, you start to become more and more comfortable with it. Totally. I think that it's really interesting because the very first time that I think most moms leave their precious little babies with the dad, I think most of us have those moments where we're just kind of like, I'm sorry, this is what you're doing? Like, (laughs) yes, this is not how we do things. So it's kind of interesting. I think all of us kind of have that feeling when, you know, the guys are involved that we're like, ah, Mm -hmm. right. (laughs) Right. I'm going to come home and the house is going to be like blown up. Right. Yeah. It turns out that nope, the house is not blown up. It's a hot mess, but that's okay too. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> right. And it's also giving them the confidence to realize that they can do it. Because I think sometimes too, as moms, because we want it done our way, mm-hmm. we want it done perfectly, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever that means. Yep. And so they're afraid to even step in and help out. Yes. Yeah, right? absolutely. When we make it so difficult, when we put so many constraints on, we really limit their ability to show up in their best way. And and so it's all about learning to just sort of step back, accept that there is more than one way to do something, and then just let it go. Because if you hang on to it, if you sit there and you stress over it, you won't enjoy yourself. You won't get what you need out of it. And so it really defeats the purpose of delegating something to someone else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if it's, you know, help around the house, you know, help keeping the housework done, you know, there's no rule that says that you have to be the only one because you're the women. You know, I think society has just, you know, placed a lot of pressure on us as women to step into that role because that's historically been what women do. But it doesn't mean that that's what's right for you and your family. And so, you know, even just being able to just let it go, let it be what it is going to be, whether or not it meets your standards the first time, the second time, whatever, it can be a work in progress. But you have to just give up some of that that notion that it's got to be you and that it's got to be perfect. I totally agree with that. And I love how you said earlier that it's a practice because I think that sometimes we think we go into it and we try this one time and we're like, oh, I'm not good at giving up control. But if we just keep practicing this, it's a habit and we can actually like form a new habit around letting go and around letting go of control and around giving the other people within our lives um, agency so that they feel like they can actually help out and, you know, form a connection with our kids too. Yes, absolutely. It's totally a practice. And it's funny because the first time that you try and do it, you absolutely are going to be tested. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's going to feel foreign. Something isn't going to go the way you thought. And so if you give up after that first time, you're never going to realize the benefits of, of actually giving it up, right? It's not serving you well to hang on to everything and, and to put that kind of pressure on yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that brings us to your kids. So remind me of the ages again. So my youngest is going is almost three, and then I have a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. And so what brings you joy about your kids? 
Well, you know, I really think it is being able to spend time with them where I am not distracted by life and just watching them and helping them to develop into these amazing humans. And, you know, I'll be really honest, like this year has been a huge struggle uh, with my eldest and, and dealing with, you know, coming into her age, dealing with things at school, and just being able to sit down with her after she comes home from school and working through some of these things, working through her emotions, you know, working through being able to guide her into being an individual thinker, not following the crowd and solving problems and all of that, that has really probably been what's given me the most joy is just seeing these amazing humans develop and then being able to then support them in that and guide them in that and and have a hand in how they show up in this world. Mm -hmm. My daughter is the same age as your eldest. And so, you know, I'm totally there in that space of trying to see how do we unpack some of those things that are happening at school, you know, and your child is coming home and they're feeling all these feelings and you're like, okay, let's sit in these feelings and let's try to unpack it if you feel comfortable doing it, you know, but it's hard because there is no guidebook. You know, like there's 50 million books out there that will like, you know, tell you different ways of doing things, but none of those books actually know how your child is. Every kid is different. Yes. And so how have you started those conversations? Just unpacking some of the things that your nine-year-old is seeing and feeling and experiencing. Yeah. So really it just starts with talking about her feelings and why. And I really take the approach, it's almost like a coaching approach where I just ask a lot of questions. And through those questions, she sees the path that she needs to go on. You know, um, I ask a lot of times, like a lot of times we do almost like a role play where it's like, okay, if you were to do this, what would that look like? And what would the worst case scenario be if you did that? And so really trying to develop that consequential thinking. Like, what are the consequences of this action? What could be the benefit of it? And just kind of going at it from that, from that approach. You know, I, I always say to all of my kids, you know, I am never going to be mad if you come to me and you are honest and let's talk about it, right? Like, if, if you've said something to somebody or you've done something and maybe you're not feeling so great about it now, let's talk about it. I don't expect perfection from my kids. I sometimes still struggle with expecting perfection from myself. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) But I also know that our children, this is the time that they learn, right? And it's our job as parents to guide them and to prepare them. And so, you know, if you're feeling guilty or you're feeling crummy about something, how do we work through this? You know, how do you feel better about it? How, how can you put yourself in somebody else's shoes and then go from there? Mm-hmm. Well, empathy is a huge part of this. Empathizing with others, empathizing with themselves. I think the more we actually sit with that lesson, then that's when we're going to see the results. Now, of course, I haven't tested this theory yet. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But so far, that's definitely what I'm noticing. A lot of the bullying happening at school, I'm realizing that if more kids just were able to empathize with each other and empathize with themselves, really see how they're showing up also, what a difference would that make? You know? Totally. The conversations around feelings and getting your child to self reflect and to actually focus on how they feel is a big key in that because people often gloss over feelings. They don't talk about it, but that's really the key to it all. Mm -hmm. It's just learning to pay attention to how you feel and then adjust accordingly. Totally. And then again, also putting yourself into someone else's shoes, as you said earlier, how are they feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, this is how this experience was for me. But how was this experience for them? With our kids, sometimes we think, well, they're still too young to maybe get that lesson. But, you know, 
I think that kids can start thinking in these ways quite early if we give them the opportunity. Yeah. I think honestly, the earlier, the better, because Mm -hmm. it becomes a habit, right? It's, It's like you said, it's a repeated practice of it and it just helps to shape them as they grow older. So it's something that they don't even consciously have to think about. It's subconsciously happening. Mm hmm. The other thing I wanted to bring up was just around when you were talking about delegating. So now that your kids are getting a little bit older, do you see yourself thinking about how you can possibly delegate even within your family? Because that's something that's been huge on my mind over the last few years. I think when the kids are little, we do all of these things for them. But the older they get, how do we work with that whole delegating thing, you know, in our family? Yeah, you bet. So my husband and I actually talked about how do we want our family to run? And, you know, I always grew up myself having chores to do. He comes from Africa where, you know, there's a lot of responsibility that's placed on kids. So we knew from, you know, very early on when we started our family that there are things that have to happen that each member of the family has to contribute to. So, um, you know, our, our oldest started doing duties around the house when she was four or five. And, you know, it's just something that they do. And, and it's been a learning for me, you know, it's, it's been a great exercise in, in giving up control as well and accepting that things aren't going to necessarily be done the way that I would do them or to my standards, right? (laughs) Um, (laughs) But the truth is, is it feels darn good to sit down after dinner and relax and the kids are cleaning the table, they're cleaning up the kitchen and, you know, it's teaching them that there's responsibility that needs to be had, that you know, there are things that that are required for a family unit to operate successfully. And it doesn't just rest on one person's shoulders. It's not just mom's job. Um, Everyone has to contribute. And right down to the three-year-old who is begging to help her sisters clear the table, you know, there are jobs, there are age-appropriate jobs. And as they get a little bit older, they get more and more responsibility. So for example, you know, my kids fold their own laundry and put it away. They clear the table and unload the dishwasher and load it back up. Um, You know, they're responsible for cleaning up their toys every night. Their bedrooms, I mean, that's still a struggle, but I mean, I think most (laughs) of them can uh, attest to that. There's some battles that you... uh, you, you let know, it go. <laughs> you do because you can shut that door, right? <laughs> exactly. You just sing the Frozen song in your head and just close the door. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I think it's so important because really, you know, I think perspective wise, our, we're here to help prepare our kids to be contributing members of society and they mm-hmm. have to be able to take care of themselves. You know, when they're young, it, it's fun for them to help out, right? You reinforce it with you're my best helper, or thank you so much, you know, and and it's fun. They want to do it. You know, as they get older, I mean, it becomes more of a struggle. But if that expectation has been set, hey, it is what it is. You've been doing this for so long, and this is how the whole family kind of comes together. So I think it's super important, you know, and and everyone has their opinions on what is appropriate for what age. And and that's up to you to decide within your own home and not to worry about what other people might think or if people are going to judge you. I think you have to let that go. Hmm. I totally agree. And that's definitely something that we've tried to um, develop really in our family that idea that we are all a part of this family, that in order for our family to be healthy and whole, everybody needs to show up and everybody needs to contribute, you know, and that I can't do it without you. Dad can't do it without you. Your brother can't do it without you. Your sister can't do it without you. We all work together. And so that's been really helpful for all of us, really. It's a good reminder to all of us that we don't have to go it alone. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So what were the first few years of parenting like for you? And when do you feel like you really started to hit your parenting stride? So I would 
say that the first couple years of parenting were were tough. Um, I, truth be told, never really saw myself as as having kids. I didn't have a very strong maternal instinct. And prior to having my first child, I had never held a baby before. So it's kind of crazy that I now have three kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy how things, things really change. You know, the, the first couple years, it was rocky. It was hard. Um, it was, you know, I certainly struggled with postpartum depression. I could not wait to get back to my job and put my kid in in daycare so that, you know, I could just kind of get back to my comfort zone of being Jen without without a kid. And, um, you know, it took quite a few years. And then, you know, when I had my second child, I think that really was the turning point for me. I really loved being home on maternity leave. I immediately wanted a third, which was like news to my husband because all along I had been two max and he was like three or four. Um, so we kind of did a role reversal there, yeah. but I was like, this is amazing. Like, I love this. I have a toddler. I have this new baby. I kind of knew what to expect a um. little bit more with the second. And so it felt easier. And, and I wasn't sweating all the small stuff with the first one. I was constantly worried. I was worried if I was doing the right thing. I was worried about every little thing about her and it was stressful with the second one. I was so much more laid back. And that's really, that's really when I was like, yeah, you know what? I can do this. I'm a mom and, and I can be amazing at it and I love it. And so what do you feel like you learned during those years? So I guess I really learned that patience is the name of the game and that when you drop your expectations of what you think should be happening, how you think things should be, everything gets a lot easier. And I learned that sometimes you've just got to shut off everyone else's opinions Get off of the internet, get off of Google, and trust your intuition. Listen to yourself because you do have all of the answers already within you. You just have to quiet the noise to hear it. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I so agree. I love it. So my next question is this. If you were to go back in time to Jen years ago, who really had it in her mindset that, you know, kids they're really not for me. That's not a part of my future. And you have all of the experience, all of the knowledge, all of the memories that you have now. What would you go back in time and tell that Jen? So I think I would tell her that having kids does not mean that you end up sacrificing everything else that you dreamed about having. It absolutely is possible to have it all. And in fact, you can have a richer life with kids. For myself, you know, I really pictured myself as this take charge businesswoman. And the lessons and the experiences that I've had as a parent actually make me more equipped to be that person. It may not happen in the timing that I had originally thought, but it comes and it's better. I think that's what I tell her. You don't have to sacrifice everything that you thought you wanted to be or that you ever dreamed of. It absolutely is possible with kids. Uh And I love how you said about the time frame because I think so often as moms who are running our own business or working outside of the home, we think, oh my goodness, this is the time frame that I had for myself. I thought I would hit this part of the corporate ladder by this time. And you know, and that's where a lot of the anxiety lies. And so the fact that you just said that, you know, just simply about the time frame, be more casual with the time frame, mm-hmm. right? Relax the time frame. Yeah. Have your dreams. Have your, have your visions, go after it, get into action, but relax the time frame around it. 
Totally. And you know, that's a, that's a work in progress. I can certainly attest to that because I myself have put a lot of pressure to hit certain milestones in my business and I've had to dial it back and realize where am I in my, in my life? What is most important to me right now? And my kids are really young and they do need more of me and that's okay. It doesn't mean that it's never going to come. It absolutely will. But right now, my priority is my kids over my business. There will come a time where that will shift because they'll be in school and I'll have more time to to pour into my business, but it's giving yourself that grace. Mm -hmm. Even this part of the conversation is really just helping me to realize about the idea of burnout. We're setting these timeframes. We have these pressures that we're placing on ourselves. And the burnout is real. The struggle around that is real. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? For sure. And I think you really nailed it there because it's all self-imposed pressure, Mm. right? A lot of of times that burnout comes from us feeling like we've got to hit certain milestones, we've got to do certain things, we've got to do it in X amount of time. And then also combined with that is this thinking of like, well, it'll just be faster if I do it myself. And so then it, it is, is taking on so much of that on our own. So again, it comes to, you know, what are you going to let go? Because I always say, and I, and I say this with my clients, you know, what is the worst case scenario of you burning out? And you need to mentally go there and you need to visualize it in order to get the wake-up call of what's coming. Because it's real. It absolutely is real. It can come out of nowhere. It can be brought on by something that you can't control. And it can completely take you out of the game. And if you're a mom, the reality is is that it's not just you who suffers. Mm -hmm. It's your kid. It's your whole family unit. And so I think it's important for us to allow ourselves to go to that worst case scenario, to really realize this is what's going to happen. Like this is, this is the path I'm on. What am I going to change? And what am I going to let go? What am I going to, what is not important? And it becomes an exercise of, you know, I always think, most moms, or I'd like to think most moms, have this never-ending to-do list in their mind. We do. (laughs) Yeah. Right. It keeps us up late at night. You know, you're laying in bed and you're like, oh my goodness, I have to remember to do this. And so it's a matter of what what can you take off of that to-do list? Because that to-do list is killing you. And not all of it is a 10 on the priority scale. Mm -hmm. And you have to just release it. It can't all get done. It can't all get done by you. It can't all get done tomorrow. And you have to learn how to just let some of that stuff go. And I think it's really important to also mention the importance of self-care. Because if you let yourself get so run down, you won't have the energy to do anything on your to-do list. That has to be a high priority. And, you know, a lot of times I think we've glamorized self-care. We make it look like it's got to be some big expensive thing like a spa day or whatever. And it can be if that's what floats your boat, but it can be something simple as taking 10 minutes, you know, before everybody wakes up and journaling, or it can be Mm -hmm. as simple as taking a hot bath at the end of the night and just shutting the door and being by yourself. It doesn't have to be hard it doesn't need to take an entire day, but it has to be something that gives you a chance to refuel. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, Jen, about the self-care. I completely agree around the idea of delegating, you know, delegating to our partners and allowing them to come in and actually be a support to us. I totally agree about delegating to our kids and allowing them to see that they're part of the family unit. And as such, we all need to work together. I totally agree around self-care and how important that is for us as moms. And we get to define what that looks like for ourselves. You know, I'm so thankful that we've been able to have this conversation because I think that not a lot of moms do have these kinds of conversations, you know, not as candidly anyway. And so Mm -hmm. this was just such a blessing for me to be able to sit with you and talk about this and unpack some of these things. 
me here in Toronto and you over there in Calgary, Alberta, that we can actually connect and really be honest about, you know, our experience as moms, but be real about the lessons that we're learning too. And so if your kids were to come across this recording sometime in the future, I would love to know what blessing you would want them to hear from your lips today. I think that because they're girls, I think that the overall message of this chat is really what I would want them to take away. That they don't have to feel the pressure to have to do it all themselves just because they're a woman, just because they're a mom. Totally. And this is going to be our very last question. Thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. And give your girls a big hug from me because they've been so amazing. And so if you had any advice or words of wisdom for other moms out there who are in this hamster wheel of trying to do it all and be it all and manage it all and just feeling overwhelmed and burnt out, what advice do you have for them? I think there's a couple pieces. It's simple for me to say and it's hard to do, but it's so important. So one is to stop comparing yourself to others on social media. Mm. That's huge. Focus on yourself and don't compare. Bump up the self-care on the priority list. And when you do that and when you create space, it becomes easier to deal with the overwhelm. So shut out those distractions, pour into yourself, and then... Give yourself permission to let go of the unrealistic expectations you've put on yourself. Just let them go. You've now reached the end of another episode of Village Mama. If you're enjoying it, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. And also give it a five-star review on iTunes. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. So until next time... Keep treating yourself and others with compassion and grace. Take care.